Hey, welcome back to Tim's Garage. I'm Tim, and this, wait a minute, this isn't my garage. It's somebody else's garage, but that's all right. This is an 04 Cayenne that I bought for my wife. It's got some codes on it. Long story short, we need to do a timing chain job. That's right, we're gonna do a timing chain job on one of these. And the reason why I'm laughing is I can't really find a definitive way to do this uh, through a video or a walkthrough. There's old data, there's some posts on Renlist. Everything I found, I'll post in the description below. And we're just going to take this in a couple video episodes, and we're just going to tear everything apart out of here. Uh, I'm not going to drop the engine out. I'm going to take the bumper, the headlights, the radiator, the AC condenser, everything out of here because this end, this car's got to actually be pushed out when I'm not working on it. Yeah, it's not my garage, but it's a pretty sweet setup, and I got to say thanks to the guys that are letting me use it. They're actually the guys I bought the Cayenne from, so that's pretty cool. All right, we got the car pulled out, everything cleaned up, and now these are all the tools you're going to need to get down to ordering parts for the timing chain cover. So we got your general sockets and adapters. A couple things I would definitely recommend you uh, um, get is some actually decent uh, high tooth ratchets. Uh, some of these places are really tight, uh, but you can do it without... Uh, one thing that you absolutely have to have, and if you have one of these cars, you already have a 12 point. Okay, you're gonna need some 12 points. You're also gonna need torques, the sockets, and the uh, um, I guess the torque bits, right? I don't know exactly what to call those. The rest of these are just regular sockets. Um, you're gonna need a 27 mil. Um, now the uh, timing uh, lockout kit comes with a stupid 27 mil socket for some reason, like as if you don't have sockets for this job and you're going to do this with it <laughs> doesn't make sense but they include it uh, i'm not going to go over that tool right here i'm going to do that next of uh, why we use one tool over the cheap ebay stuff uh so just you know you definitely need some flatheads um these guys are invaluable with a quarter inch driver and some electric tape because uh, it was really tight. In fact, that one bolt was almost impossible to get to without it. And you need some compressed air and an air gun to blow the leaves and crap out of there. Um, mallet, different tools, some magnetic trays, Ziploc bags, and a Sharpie. To take that crank sprocket off, you need a really good impact. This is one of the really good ones. And a lot of air. I run a system of 100, 100 PSI, 95 PSI in this building and i had to jack it up to 140 in order for it to take off this maybe we'll do it less but that's why i just cranked it all the way up to the regulator and it took it right off um that crank bolt also will fit a um inch and a sixteenth so i actually ended up not using this i used this to just turn over because i already had gotten it out and these are the uh, kits for the torques and the 12 point some of the useful things were this vinyl hose I think that's three quarter. The other one was five sixteenths. Um, that's pretty much all you need. That and a bucket and a whole roll of paper towels and soapy water and whatnot. That's it. That's all you need to take these parts off. All right, let's get back at it. All right, so I didn't want to make a video on how to take the bumper and the headlights and all that stuff off. I figured if you can't figure out how to do this, please, like, maybe you shouldn't be trying a timing belt, but... Pelican Parts has a great write-ups on how to do a lot of this service. Uh, not how to do what I'm doing, but how to take the bumper off and everything. Uh, one thing I will add to that is that the turn signal markers, you do not, I'm pretty sure you do not need to take these turn signal markers off. In the Pelican Parts uh, write-up, uh, it says to take this screw off and then remove the turn signal. And then there's one, and then, they, and then the next step, they said this one also needs to come off. That's not accurate. Both of these need to come off in order to take the take it off. However, getting the, these back in place, just leave the damn thing in place. Reach in and unplug the wire. That's all it is. It's just this. It just plugs in. You should be able to just reach in there and unplug it and leave these attached. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the pictures. They show there's a secondary bolt here, which there isn't. At least on this model, okay? And I'm pretty sure they're all kind of like that. And then there's this one. This is a Torx. This one does need to come off. It's the this screw. And there's the same on the other side, so everything's mirrored. The ones down at the bottom, the ones at the top, 
And then, of course, the wheel well liner. And just give it a good yank. Don't pull out. Pull forwards. As far as everything else goes, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to bore you through everything else. But the one thing is these clips here. Right? They have a clip on the back side and a little spring. And it's really easy to get on the other side. However, this side, the AC manifold is in the way. And instead of undoing this bolt, which I'm probably going to have to do to get this thing back in place, uh, but to get it out, I just took the circle clip off the bottom, right, and then pulled with a pry bar up, because you can pull the radiator up. It's just loose here. And just wiggle it out of place to get it off. Uh, that's how I did it, and I'm sure I'm going to tell you how to put it back on the right way when I go to put it on, because I'm not exactly sure how to do that, and I'll find out. So those are the couple tips. Everything else are just bolts on and off, and the headlights, if you don't know how to take the headlights out, well, you're going to be in for a treat, because it's literally just a little tool, you turn in there, and they pop out, bibbidi bobbidi boop no big deal. So the next step, which is where we're going to start, the real meat and potatoes of these videos, is we're going to drain the coolant and uh, fluids out of all these coolers, right? Now... Before I did this, I took the car to a shop and have it and have it removed from with refrigerant, right? And I had them reclaim the refrigerant. Okay, it doesn't need to be under vacuum or anything. Just fill, just have them remove the refrigerant, and then when you go back, they'll put it back in for you at a very low cost. I think they're going to charge me like. $85 to do that and I actually have the equipment I have the vacuum pump the reclaimer machine I don't have a tank my tank has 410 in it and this is a 134a so I'm not going to reclaim this I'm just going to pay the $80 I'm going to pay $20 anyways to do the AC so you have to do the AC uh and after looking at this I mean there's the the engines right freaking there just wait begging for a timing belt so anyways I'm going to start draining things I'm going to start doing things and uh, if I find something weird, we'll just approach that as we go. So, let's get at it. Okay, so we got the AC parts undone. Uh, the This bolt here, you gotta pull the whole thing kinda out and just, it's a pain in the ass, but it's doable. And the other side, see this one goes here, and the yellow one goes over there. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, uh, by the way, when you do this, watch out when you pull this out, cause it's gonna spray a bunch of stuff at you, you don't want page oil on your face. You just take an earplug, and just stick that SOB right in there, okay? These are gonna be just fine, they won't deteriorate in the page oil. They'll get a little swollen, but they will work just fine in keeping crap out of there. All right. Now, we also took some 5.8. I think it's 5.8. I'm not very sure. I'll put in the description below if it isn't. Um, vinyl hose between the, I think that's power steering. I am, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, just to keep these connected and dirt free and anything from leaking out as much as possible. I am. Uh, this car has been completely kept up on service. So I'm not going to flush it until it's time to do. I'll just top it off. Uh, same with the coolant. This, uh, I'm going to replace the coolant with what I just pulled out. So we have one thing left. We got the uh, these hoses off, the AC off, the harness off. You don't have to undo the grounds, like I said. Uh, unlike what I said. And there's one last bolt right down here. You undo this guy, and the, I think this is the transmission cooler. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so anyways, that comes off, and this whole thing should come right on out of here. And we can start blasting away at some of the rest of the stuff. All right.
All right, so I'm at a stopping point right now. I'm gonna take a little bit of a uh, break and then get right back and get this other valve cover off and see if I can get this off. So one of the tricks that I did here was I used a quarter inch drive, quarter inch socket with a T40, just regular quarter inch driver on there because the, um, well, what I have, at the T50, but they're much longer. And this bolt in the back, very corner, is uh, next to impossible to get out without using this guy. So that's a trick. Uh, use some electric tape, tape around extensions so they don't fall down and get lost. Make sure I have a magnet and a stick on handy. And quite honestly, just take stuff apart. It hasn't been that bad. Uh, don't force anything. Everything comes off pretty easy. So I almost forced this off without taking the bolts off. Duh. So, well, I'm not taking the plenum off. I don't want to. I want to try keeping this on. Uh, I think you can do it without. I think you can do this job without this coming off. Especially these. Like you can take these brackets off and take that crank position sensor off. Everyone says no. You have to take this off. Yeah, you probably could if you haven't done the coolant hose underneath. Then go ahead and do that. But this coolant hose underneath has already been done, and there is an upgrade to fix the rubber, uh, for lack of a better term, fern co that puts that together. But I'm gonna leave it. It wasn't done that long ago, so uh, I'm going to take a break and get back on to the rest of this. All right, let's get working. So this nitro cat's pretty freaking awesome and what I ended up having to do is jump up my air compressor all the way up, get 150 psi, 140 psi and it took it right off. I have my regulator set at 150 psi in here, uh, or 100 psi so that wasn't cutting it but there you go, there's the answer to that question, how you take that bolt off. Let's keep at it, Let's see if we can get this pulley off. You gotta be really careful if you're gonna do it this way. This is really ghetto, but usually ones that have that kind of a bolt on there, they can just, there you go, see? Just little wiggle back and forth, right? All right, so I wanted to discuss some tips and tricks and some major issues that I ran into, including things that I did wrong. First off, it's harmonic balancer. Do not turn it counterclockwise. That's very important. If you turn it counterclockwise, you're going to run into some issues. I'll explain that in a little bit. So you see I used a file on that harmonic balancer's um, lockout pin. Uh, go grab yourself a 5 16 drill bit and some oil and run that through, and that'll get the rust and everything else out. It'll be a nice, tight fit for that lockout pin. Now, you could use a 5 16 drill bit to lock out the harmonic balancer on this timing chain job. I'm fairly convinced you actually don't need the Porsche timing tools. I'll discuss that in part two. Um, but going back to rotating the crankshaft, only rotate it clockwise. And all data specifically says to rotate it clockwise in order to take up the slack on the tensioner. So don't take out the timing chain tensioner. Um, just rotate it from 45 degrees to its locked out position, that is a must because that makes sure everything's in the right position. Then lock out the camshafts. That's very important that you lock out the camshafts next. I did not do that and it's gonna take actually a fair amount of work for me to fix this problem because right now I have the engine 180 degrees out. It's The camshafts are upside down essentially so I can't use the lockout um, bars that come with the kit. Uh, so all data says if it's if it's 180 degrees, just rotate it around. Well, I've already jumped timing 
because of the lobes on the camshafts have already kind of found their own centers. And so now I have to pull the spark plugs out and find out where the top dead center is exactly. So and kind of like bring down the cylinders just a little bit for the valves to clear so I can rotate each camshaft. And uh, it's going to probably take me a while because honestly I can't figure out how to do that without taking the camshafts off. And I don't want to do that. So uh, that will be in part two of this whole thing but just watch out make sure you follow the procedure on this I was in a hurry and you know once you kinda of start working you make mistakes but as long as you don't break anything and you take your time you know what's 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 the worst that's gonna happen you learn from your mistakes okay so another tip and trick here is that stainless steel pipe you're gonna see me bend this out of the way and then bend that tab out of the way that was all you need to do to get this timing cover off. If you don't do that, you're not going to get the timing cover off. You have to take the plenum off. So, food for thought. So, I just put the covers back on with just like one bolt uh, that holds everything on and just made sure everything's plugged up. And I had a friend help me push this thing out of the garage so they can use their garage during the day. Um, and just ordered parts. And there it sat. And we pushed it back in. And as of this point, we're working on part two. So, see you there.